We want to especially thank God for the privilege to be here at another convention. We celebrate with our father and mother, all the fathers and mothers in the house. And I celebrate you because God is speaking to you. And everything God is saying to you we find expression in your life even before you leave this convention. I'm not sure someone is hearing me. Everything God is saying to you, they will begin to be fulfilled before you leave this convention. We have been asked to speak on no weapon formed against you will prosper. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. Isaiah 54 verse 17. Father, we ask that you will breathe afresh upon your word. You will speak. You will cause us to hear and understand. You will cause your word to build faith in our hearts to receive the word until they begin to come to pass. Holy Spirit, I submit myself to you and everyone here in this world and everyone that will hear it. Father, that the life in your world will speak now and will continue to speak in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Now, when you say amen, you are saying let it be so. So if you agree with what we have declared upon your life, what do you say? I mean, you can say it louder with confidence now. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Now the theme of our convention is and God said. When you look at the last part of Isaiah 54, 17, it says, says the Lord. So whether and God said or says the Lord, it is the same thing. So that we can reframe our topic for this session as and God said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Or if you like, you can say, no weapon formed against you, says the Lord. But let's go with the first one. And God said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, it is important that you take it serious and you agree with it. Why? Because God has the capacity to fulfill everything he has said. God does not play with words. God does not say what he will not do. So he has the capacity he has the willingness to also bring it to pass. 
So when God said, no weapon formed against you, God means no weapon formed against you will prosper. And I say again by the word of the Lord, that no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Now there are several questions that comes to mind. For example, you want to ask, what is a weapon? Who can form a weapon? How can we fight against a weapon? What do we do that weapons will not prosper? Many questions. But probably the best place to start is to explore what a weapon is. Now, generally, weapons are implements or anything that is used when there is contention. Every time there is something at stake for someone and they want to display strength. They want to display power. They want to show that they have what it takes to get it. They deploy weapons. If it is a struggle between two or more, weapons are usually used as a show of force, a show of strength, a show of power, just to show that you can get what is at stake. So knife is a weapon, for example. A club is a weapon. Sword is a weapon. Spear is a weapon. Bow and arrows are weapons. Battle axe is a weapon. Guns, machine guns. They are all examples of weapons. But other kind of weapons will include words. The words you speak or people speak to you, words are weapons. And do you know also that even the eyes and eye contact can be used as weapons. Knowledge is a weapon. Sometimes the size of a human being, very huge, lanky, tall, can be a weapon. Prayers is weapon. So there are different kinds of weapons. Apart from the first side, there is this second type we looked out. Now there are different categories of weapons. We have physical weapons and we have non-physical weapons. That should be clear from what we were talking about weapons. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 45 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 45 you will find the contention or the battle between David and Goliath. And you will find David saying to Goliath, you come with me, or you come against me rather, with sword, spear, javelin. Those were the weapons that Goliath had. But David said his own weapon too. He said, I come against you in the name of the law of hosts. So you can see that whereas spear, javelin, bows and arrows are weapon, the name of the Lord is also a weapon. That brings us to the ideas that Paul was talking about in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. He talked about carnal weapons and spiritual weapons. 
He said, even though we are fighting against flesh and blood, our weapons are not carnal, but spiritual. So there are, if you like, spiritual weapons and carnal weapons. The same thing as physical weapons and non-physical weapons. It's also good to know that in categorizing weapons, we have weapons of offense that are called arms. And we have weapons of defense that are called armor. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 did not say put on the whole arms of God, but put on the whole armor of God. Now, weapons of offense are called arms, and weapons of defense are called armors. So, in this category, there are weapons that are used only for offense, and there are weapons that are, can be used both for offense and defense. In other words, they can be weapons both to attack and to defend. Now, there are some weapons that are only used for defense. They are just armors. So we have weapons that are arms. We have weapons that are armors. And we have weapons that can be both arms and weapons. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, for example, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, The word of God is like a two-edged sword. Like a two-edged sword. So it can be used both as an arm and an armor. So when you have God saying something to you, uh, it is not a one-sided thing. The same word of God that can be used for offense can also be used for defense. The same word of God that can be used to attack as an arm can also be used to shield as an armor. Of course, prayer also is a double-edged sword. Let me press the matter a little bit further. Because there are some things you should understand about weapons. Number one, in the Bible, and when you look at conventional use of weapon, you will find that generally when anyone is using a weapon, it is using it for the purpose of destroying or to kill. Weapons are never deployed for play. The final reason why anyone will seek to deploy a weapon is if it comes to the end of the matter, kill, destroy. That's why they deploy weapons. Secondly, it's important for you to know that there is intentionality in forming, producing, and use of weapons. Sometimes you hear of accidental discharge. But when you probe further, uh, you will discover that truly, 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 there is nothing like accidental discharge. One way to cover up is to say it was accidental. There is intentionality. No matter how small in the use of weapons. So no one will deploy a weapon against you who did not plan to do so. Nobody 
just wakes up and said, uh, what do I do today? What do I do today? And just carry a weapon and begin to shoot. No, 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 no. Even in countries where they go to schools to kill people, usually when they probe, they will find out that before the exercise, whoever did it had some intention. So what they are probing mostly is what is the motive. So nobody will deploy a weapon against you without a motive. That is intentionality. And so you also cannot deploy your own weapon for no reason. There is intentional, there is a motive. So everyone who is deploying any kind of weapon against you has a motive. There is a thing they want to accomplish. The reason for which the weapon is being deployed. Number three, it's also important for you to know that everyone who deploys a weapon believes it will prosper. Nobody goes to war with a weapon they know will fail them. The moment they know it will not work, they won't use it. So if anyone will come against you with a weapon, just know that behind the mind of that person, there is a belief that that weapon will prosper. That's why they come with it. Nobody will come with a weapon that will disappoint. Nobody will come with a weapon that will fail. So you should begin to understand why God said no weapon form against you will prosper. Something will happen between when they start, when they deploy, with the expectation that it will prosper. I said to someone here, God is saying to you, there is no weapon form against you that will prosper. So even though those deploying it believe it will prosper, that is why they are deploying it. But the almighty God says it will not prosper. I am not hearing your amen. I don't know what your own battles are. But if you are the one God is speaking to, just imagine all the weapons. They may have been prospering up to now. But the Lord is saying, those weapons will not prosper anymore. Number four. It is good for you also to know that there is a word, spoken word, or thong dimension to every war and the use of weapons. In other words, words are very, very crucial to the use of weapons. Words, the words we speak, very, very crucial to the use of weapons. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, 1 Samuel 17, verse 43 to 46, you will find the exchange of words between Goliath and David. Goliath had spear. He had javelin, physical weapons. But Goliath knew that with those weapons, words are important. So he began to speak to David and said, you are coming to me with stones? And he began to curse David by his gods. He was speaking words. Even though he had physical weapons with him, Yet, he realized the power of words and spoke. And David also knew that I had stone, I had my sling, but words are important. 
words are important. So there is a world dimension. No two people will deploy weapons against each other, harms against each other without speaking. They will talk about it. They will fight about it. Words verbally. They will do everything, exchange, first in words, before they now begin to use other forms of deploying their weapons. I said to you again, whatever weapon of words have been deployed against you, the Lord said I should tell you, those weapons will not work anymore. Those weapons will not work anymore. One more thing that you should know about how weapons work. We have tried to differentiate between arms and armors. Now, you should know that when you go to a battle with armors instead of arms, you have positioned yourself to fail. Because even though Amos too are weapons. The way they walk is different from the way arms walk. And it's good to note that what God is saying to us is not about Amos. It's about arms. It's about arms. When you read 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 38, 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 38, you will discover that when Saul was preparing David to go and fight Goliath, he did not give David arms. He gave David armors. So David wore the armors of Saul and said, no, you can't go and fight a Goliath with armors. I have not tried this. I would rather use the arms I have than carry on with this armor. And a lot of us, and that's the reason why the battles you face keep moving from one part to another because you are not fighting with arms. You are fighting with armors. So for most of the time, we are fighting to defend Defend and not to attack. And if your armor can cover everywhere, the enemy is looking for the part of your life and body that is exposed. So he will attack there. But the good news is that God said, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. So it does not even matter anymore now whether what you have are arms or amos. The almighty God is ready to intervene for you. What you do not have, he is making available. What you cannot use, he is making Options for you to use for you. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Who can form a weapon against you? Of course, Satan can form weapons against you. Satan can fashion a weapon against you. When for whatever reason, Satan decides to make your life miserable. He deploys different kinds of weapons. Many of you don't have the physical weapon deployed against you. They are non-physical. And sometimes, they go from non-physical to physical attack. Re-physical weapons, arms are used against you. Satan can do it. But not only Satan, demons can do it. 
demons can form and fashion weapons against you. I'm sure some of you have heard the phrase before, demonic attack. Demonic attack. I am not sure you have heard of demonic defense before. I have not heard of demonic defense. Because demons don't come to defend when they are coming against you. They are coming to attack. They have their weapons ready and they want to put you on the defense. Unfortunately, many of us have surrendered, have yielded. Many of us are down already, struggling, rolling from here to there because of all the demonic attacks, the weapons of attack that the that demonic spirits have been hauling at you. The good news is that God said, no weapon from now on that is formed against you will prosper. Please tell your neighbor, even if the weapons have been prospering before, they will not prosper again. Look at another neighbor. Say, neighbor, God said, even if the weapons have been prospering, they will not prosper anymore. Is that a good prayer for you? If you agree with what your neighbor says, what do you say? There is no situation that is hopeless because God has spoken and God is still speaking. Now, human enemies too can deploy weapons against you. Human enemies. It's a joke when you think you don't have enemies. For the more you believe you don't have enemies, the longer you will stay under their servitude, you do have human enemies. And when they deploy non-physical weapons against you and it is, they think it's not working, they will make it physical. Some will start with physical. When they discover that the physical is not working, they go to spiritual weapons and begin to haul it at you. But God said, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. God recognized that there are weapons. There are weapons. God didn't say they shouldn't use the weapon. But he says, let them use it but their weapons will fail them. I think you should say that to your neighbor again. Say, neighbor, God said, every weapon that the enemy has formed against you, we fail them. Those weapons will not work anymore. Of course, we have hired agents of the enemy too who can form weapons against you. But then when you look at the passage we read, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17 is the ending part, the last verse of the chapter. If you read Isaiah chapter 54 from verse 1, Carefully, you will discover that there are specific situations, specific people whose situation God was speaking to. And I will identify for us very quickly 
9. And I want to plead with you. If you discover that your own is one of them, as you hear what God is saying to your situation, say, I receive it with a loud amen. So who is God speaking to? Number one, when you look at verse one, you will hear God speaking to the barren. To all who are barren, God is saying, your time to break forth with singing and fruit has come. Why? Because no weapon formed against your fruitfulness will prosper anymore. It does not matter what kind of barrenness it is. God said, your time to shout and sing has come. Those weapons, they have used up till now to stop you from being fruitful. Those weapons will not prosper anymore. It is not how long those weapons have succeeded. God said, from this moment, those weapons will not prosper anymore. Who is God speaking to? When you read verse 2 and 3 of Isaiah chapter 54, you will see God or hear God speaking to those who have been struggling with their walk and their life. Nothing is working. You are walking hard. Like they will say, walking like an elephant and eating like a rat. Well, you are eating. But what you are producing, your struggles, are not commensurate with the amount of fruit you are getting from it. God is speaking to you. He's saying it is time for you to enlarge your tent. He's saying it is time for you to lengthen your course. Because from now on, you shall expand to the right. You shall expand to the left. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper anymore. So everything that has been deployed to just make your life a life of struggle, to make you small, with the intention of making you to remain small, God is speaking to you. Say they will not prosper anymore. All of you who have been waiting to expand, God said, it is time for you to expand. It is time for you to lengthen your cord. You will stretch to the left and you will stretch to the right because no weapon that is formed against you will prosper anymore. Who is God speaking to? When you look at verse 4, God is speaking to all those who are under reproach. You have been carrying reproach all your life. You have dressed well. They say dress well. You have put perfume, they say, because they say put perfume. You have changed the way you walk because that is the way it is. Some of you have even intentionally changed your size or size of part of your body because you think that is where they say the answer will come from. And after all said and done, the only thing you keep meeting is reproach, is rejection, is reproach, is rejection. God is speaking to you. What is he saying? He said, don't be afraid anymore. Because I am taking away your shame and your disgrace. No weapon of shame and disgrace that has been formed against you will prosper anymore. 
It's not how long you have carried your shame and disgrace and reproach. And true to what the Bible is saying, you can't be under reproach and be confident. Everywhere you go, you go with fear. Thinking that, well, they will discover. And those who work with psychology, when they discover that you are afraid, you have something to hide. And many of you do not have anything to hide. It's just because of reproach. God is speaking to you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because from now on, he will take your reproach away from you. And he said, you will not remember your reproach and what it has brought into your life anymore. When level change, people also change. A new season is dawning for you. This new season, you will not know shame anymore. You will not know disgrace anymore because all the weapons that brought you this low, they will not work anymore. Yeah. Who is God speaking to? Verse 7 and 8. God is speaking to all those who have become forsaken. You have been forsaken, abandoned. You have so many people around you and yet you are a lonely person. You have so many people who could help you but nobody is looking in your direction. God is saying, from now on, I will have mercy on you and I will demonstrate my everlasting kindness to you. God is saying, whatever it is that has brought you to this point of being forsaken, they will not work anymore. You know, sometimes it is words. Somebody just goes somewhere and scandalizes you. And everybody who meets you, look at you with the lens of the scandal. That's all. Somebody just speak in a family meeting against you and everybody else in the family just abandon you. Good news for you today. God said, I will have mercy on you. I will demonstrate my everlasting kindness to you. Who is God speaking to? God is speaking, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 10. God is speaking to all those who are surrounded by hills and mountains of problem. Hills and mountains of problem. Everywhere around you is filled with one trouble or the other. There is confusion. There is health challenge. There is business challenge. There is family challenge. Everything. Nothing is working. And some of you even have contemplated committing suicide. And then when you come for meetings like this, okay, let me keep hanging on. I have good news for you. God is saying, your mountain shall depart. God is saying, all the hills around you shall be removed. And God is saying, I will establish my covenant of peace with you. Whatever vehicle that has been used to deploy these mountains of problems, the Lord is saying they will not prosper anymore. You remember when the Pharaoh was pursuing the children of Israel? They got into the Red Sea and Pharaoh pursued them. God put darkness 
in front of Pharaoh and his army. He put light, daylight, in front of the children of Israel. Notwithstanding the darkness, Pharaoh was still moving. What did God do? God touched the wheels of his chariots. He stopped their weapon because the only great weapon, in fact, greatest weapon that Pharaoh had, first of all, were his chariots. No matter how much you can run, you cannot outrun a horse except you have a special anointing like the one Elijah had. But such anointing don't come all the time. They come only once in a while. So the children of Israel were walking and chariots were pursuing them with Pharaoh and his armies on top. What did God do? He spoiled the spokes of the tires and the wheels of their chariots. What God is saying to you is that every vehicle that is being used to dump problems upon your life, those vehicles will not work anymore. Because the vehicles are their strongest weapon. They are their strongest weapon. So those of you who came in here with hills and mountains of problems, I think it's time for you to rejoice. <laughs> Why? Because God said, those weapons will not prosper anymore. I'm sure if you are the one, your own amen will be different from everybody around you. God is speaking, and he's speaking to someone. Verse 11 and 12. Isaiah 54, verse 11 and 12. God is speaking to those who are afflicted. What God is saying is, I will cause your affliction to cease. I will cause your affliction to cease. He said, I will comfort you and I will beautifully re-establish you. That's a wonderful one. So God is not only going to cause affliction to stop. He will bring great recoveries for you. What does that mean? That from now on, all the weapons of affliction against you will not prosper anymore. You came this far because the weapons were working. God said they will stop working now. They will stop working now. They will stop working now. But the beauty of it is this. God is not only going to cause them to stop working. He said he will reestablish you. It will beautify you and it will comfort you. If you are the one said I'm the one he's speaking to. What is God saying? God is speaking to all those who have challenges with their children. Verse 13. There are so many people on their own they don't have any issue. Or they have even gone past a stage when they think they have issue. But their problem is their children. Oh, this is my children. Oh, this is my child. And there are many of you who came to this meeting. Not because of anything personal to you. But because of your children. Look at it. In verse 13. God is saying, I will teach your children. I will give them great peace. And he said, from now on, no weapon formed against your children will prosper anymore. That shouldn't be difficult for many of us to understand. As soon as Jesus was born, 
The star showed up there in the sky. People who could read star read it and understood. This is a star typical of someone great. And they were going to pay obeisance to whoever, whosoever star it is. But Herod was angry. Herod was angry. So the child had problem from childhood. But God stopped it. That God is still working today. So for every one of you whose prayer is about your children, whether they are sick or they have gone wayward, whichever problem you have with your children, God is saying, I will teach your children for you. And I will give them great peace. Sometimes, where the enemy is waiting to torment parents with children issue. It won't stop you from educating them. But then when they finish all the education, they won't get husband or they won't get wife. Some of them will get husband and get wife. And then children will not come. And everything still fall back on the parents. Every one of you parents here, it does not matter whichever way the enemy is trying to use your children to torment you. God said, those torments will not work anymore. What those children need to know that they do not know, God will teach them. Because sometimes too, you tell those children, do this, do this, do this. They can't understand. And if they don't understand what you are saying, they will not do it. So what you cannot teach them for victory, God said, I will teach them for you. I will teach them for you. And great will be the peace of your children. So whatever weapon of confusion that the enemy has been using upon the life of your children, they will not prosper anymore. Who is God speaking to? God is speaking, verse 14, to all those who are under any form of oppression or terror. That's a very great one for us in this nation at this time. Everyone who is under oppression and terror, God is saying, from now on, you shall be far from oppression and no terror will come near you anymore. Those who terrorize you use weapons. Those who oppress you use weapons. So when God is saying you shall be far from oppression and you shall be far from terror, what God is saying is that no weapon of oppression that is fashioned against you will prosper anymore. What God is saying, no weapon of terror that is formed against you will work anymore. The weapon of your oppressors will fail them. The weapons of your tormentors will fail them. In the name of Jesus. Verse 15. God is speaking. And God is saying something. To all those who have been suffering because of conspiracy, people just gather and you are the subject of their discussion. Not how you will prosper, but how they will bring you down. Conspiracy is a very, very dangerous thing. In the office, you are the only one everybody wants down. In the family, you are the only one everybody is attacking. In the community, 
you are the only one people are conspiring against. When you dress, you dress too much. When you don't dress, you don't dress at all. When you talk, you talk too much. When you don't talk, you are too silent. There is nothing you do that can please conspirators. But everyone who conspire against you, hear what God is saying. All those who assemble against you shall fall for your sake. No matter who they are. God is saying, I will stop them from assembling. But from now on, from now on, every of them who assemble against you, they shall fall for your sake. What does that mean? That the weapon of conspiracy shall not prosper. Not anymore. And not only that will God not cause it to prosper, he will cause all those weapons to be destroyed. And God said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now listen to this. He said, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. So you also have a weapon. Your tongue is your weapon. We have said earlier that words are weapon. God has spoken. You have heard what God is saying. You have said your amen to it. And maybe you want to say another amen to what God is saying to you. That from now on you shall be fruitful. That from now on no conspiracy will work against you anymore. That from now on you shall be far from oppression. That from now on no terror will terrify you anymore. That from now on you shall be far from affliction. That from now on, you will lengthen your cord and expand. You will expand to the left. You will expand to the right. And everyone who is looking down on you will look up to you. The God is saying, every hill, every mountain of problem around you, he will move them away from you. That's what God is saying. To God has said what he will say. What will you say? Thank God for the power of words. I think you should pray. Amen. If you want to clap, clap. That's also your weapon. Clapping is not an armor. It is a harm. Shout hallelujah. So God has said what he will do. It's now your turn to speak what you also want. Father, you have said all weapons will not prosper anymore. All right. Since God said it, and I believe it, I will look at those things and tell them, God said, you will not prosper in my life anymore. How many of you have things like that you want to address? All right, lift your voice and let's just begin to talk to it. Rise up on your feet. Everything you don't want to prosper in your life again, God has said they will not prosper. Use your words as weapon. Use your words as weapon. God said, 
He will teach my children. So everything working against my children, you will not prosper anymore. God said you will not prosper anymore you problem I agree with God I say you will not not in my life anymore Poverty is a weapon. As well, it's also a weapon. God said. He will enlarge my cost. <clears throat> God said I will be fruitful. God said I should sing. God said I should rejoice. I agree with it. Therefore, you the root of barrenness and lack of fruit in my life, you shall not prosper anymore. Use your mouth. You're not going to pay anybody for using it. It's a weapon. Use your words. agree with you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Begin to bring your prayers to a close. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I agree with you that everything you have declared now will work for you. Now, it is possible that someone standing close to you couldn't use words like you have used your own. I want you to get a neighbor. You are going to declare these words of God into the life of that your neighbor. Say with me in the name of Jesus. God said. No weapon formed against you will prosper anymore. I agree with God and I declare into your life that from now on, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Go ahead and pray for that your neighbor. I agree with you because God said And I stand in agreement with you. No weapon. No weapon. Formed against you will prosper 
anymore. I speak it into your life. I speak it into your situation. No matter what the situation is, God said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper anymore. No weapon. No weapon. Whether physical weapons or spiritual weapons no weapon formed against you will prosper anymore. Thank you, Father. No weapon. No weapon, no weapon. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I agree with you. That every word that your neighbor pronounces upon you, they will find expression in your life. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper anymore. In the name of Jesus. I want you to get another neighbor before we round up. Get another neighbor and say with me, neighbor. God said, every tongue that rises against you, they stand condemned. I agree with you that from now on, no weapon deployed against you in judgment will prosper anymore. You are entering your season of great restoration. Because God said so. Go ahead and pray for that person. Because God said so. Because God said so. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Zeman brolo she pe kosto koromba she kalia. Amamosh te kese katebori hazakata. Mrele me kapose kete rinda rama koso torobo kosheka. Yima babose kete rinda lama koshengari hazada robo koshete. Yima mamose kete lombo robo kosen kateli barakashata. Yeah, buddy, hand a ring a ring, but ring a rabaka shanka talabaka shi. Imagabo sende rebe kosho korobo koste zinda la makashenda la ba. Miye nagazando robo ondo robo kosheka yida hazakata liba. 
Mingrolo se kanderi ma santo lobo shendele makasheka. Imamo se kanda lobo te rahanda rubu shekanda le mazaka. God said it. I believe it. And so I declare no weapon form against you in judgment will prosper anymore. Thank you, Father. Oh, blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. It just come into my mind that in the spirit of this prayer, we should pray for this nation and other nations in the world. The enemy is waging war against nations, terrifying people, oppressing people. Maybe you should get a third partner now. And say together with your partner, God said it, that my nation shall be far from terror and shall be far from oppression. I believe it. And I agree with you that from now on, no weapon of terror, no weapon of oppression Deploy against my nation. Deploy against your nation. Deploy against your community. Deploy against my community. They will not prosper anymore. Go ahead and pray without your neighbor. No weapon of oppression and terror against my nation, against your nation, against my community, against your community will prosper anymore. They will not 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 prosper anymore. God said no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. So you will be far from oppression and terror Thank you, Father. Oh, blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. One more prayer and then I'll pray with us and be done. Now God said, in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 10, that hills and mountains shall be removed. And tonight, the theme of the deliverance service is mountain be move. So God is speaking already. God is speaking already. 
Now, you are going to pray this one prayer. Because God said no weapon formed against you will prosper, and so all mountains and hills must be removed tonight. No mountain will stand. Whatever is causing the mountain will not prosper anymore. Go ahead and pray now. No mountain, no hill. Because God said they shall be removed. Whoever comes with whatever is a mountain or a hill or whatever, they shall be removed. Because God said they will not prosper anymore. They shall not prosper anymore. They shall not prosper anymore. Mountain, hear the word of God. Move. You will not prosper anymore. You will not prosper anymore. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. Just clothe your son with power afresh. She stands to declare the words. The mountains we hear are moved because God said they will not prosper anymore. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And God said, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Because no weapon formed against you will prosper, from now on you shall be fruitful. From now on, you shall enlarge your coast. From now on, you shall be far from oppression. From now on, you shall be far from reproach. From now on, you will not be forsaken anymore. From now on, everyone working against your children will fail. From now on, every tongue rising against you shall be condemned. Because God said no weapon formed against you will prosper. Every conspiracy against you shall fail. You believe it shall be so for you? Then let me hear you shout a great hallelujah. The hallelujah of a victor shout hallelujah. You believe your own is going to be the first? Then let your hallelujah be the last one to keep sounding. 